Are you ready to accelerate the growth of your business? Welcome to the Revenue Growth Podcast. This is the place for business owners, sales leaders, and marketing professionals to get ideas and inspiration to drive exponential revenue growth. Each week, you'll get actionable insights from the world's leading marketing and sales thought leaders and practitioners. Are you ready to grow? Let's join our host, Daryl Amy, author of Revenue Growth Engine. Welcome back to the Revenue Growth Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl Amy, trailblazer and growth architect. And we have got a great guest today who is going to help us accelerate growth and set our businesses up to scale. You're absolutely going to enjoy meeting Paul Higgins. Special thank you to this episode's sponsor, Selling from the Heart. If you've got a sales team and you want to boost results, you need to get to know the team at Selling from the Heart. And what's great about Selling from the Heart is how it takes a different approach to driving sales. The goal, build trust quickly with clients and prospects through authenticity. What is the result? More effective prospecting, higher close rates, and more referrals. And best of all, the Selling from the Heart methodology works with your existing sales model. And to learn more, just visit www.sellingfromtheheart.net and make sure to listen to me and my co-host, Larry Levine, each week on the Selling from the Heart podcast. Well, as I promised, our guest today is fantastic. You're going to meet in just a moment, Paul Higgins. And Paul is incredible. After a career with the legendary companies, companies like Coca-Cola, Paul helped create a technology consultancy, which was sold to Google. And today he helps consultants and cloud partners scale to either exit their business profitably or to just have something they love so much that they want to have someone run it for them and keep it rolling. So here's the deal. Whether you're in sales, whether you're in marketing, you're an entrepreneur that owns a company or you're an enterprise, what you're going to learn today are principles to scale your business. And not only that, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, without further ado, Paul, welcome to the Revenue Growth Podcast. It's great to have you here. Yeah, great to be here, Daryl. Yeah, absolutely. And I am so excited about this conversation. Uh, first of all, I got to say, big time congratulations. Spinning up a tech company, uh, selling it to Google, that right there is unbelievably uber cool in my book. Yeah, and, and just a slight variations that we did sell it to a google partner it wasn't yeah. the google company itself okay so, clarify uh, either way totally cool and that's yeah. what it had but, google in the title let's, let's <laughs> fair enough that's good that so uh we note all of that in the uh, fine print of the podcast but here's the deal you know this is the uh, you know this is the dream i was going to say the american dream but i'm canadian you're obviously australian uh but this is the dream is to be able to set our businesses up in such a way that they would be um, desirable enough for someone to want to buy them or running well enough that, you know, we wanted to keep doing what we were doing because it was less frustrating. And so now I know after that exit, you're working with organizations, helping them do just that to set themselves up to scale. Um, I'm just curious though, in your experience of looking across multiple types of organizations, what are, where do companies go in the ditch on this? Like, what do you find when you walk in the door that you go, oh, that's got to change? Ultimately, it comes down to two words, Daryl, and that's letting go. <laughs> All right. So unpack that uh, for a minute. Yeah. So for most businesses, you know, uh, particularly people who left corporate, they've either got lots of sales skills or maybe not a lot, right? But the mm -hmm. one thing they have to do is sell. So they're the ones that, and, and most sales come through network and referrals to begin with, and you, you know, work, you know, your backside off to get all of those uh, leads in and, and close those sales. And that's great. And then it's all you, right? So mm -hmm. you think, okay, well, I'm getting some success here. I'll just keep doing it. And particularly if referrals come in, it's normally a fairly easy close. So you yep. just keep doing it and doing it. And then it gets to a point where you're like, you know what, I haven't seen my family for a while and, you know, I'd, I'd love to take a couple of days off and whatever. And then as soon as you go to do that, you think, oh, actually, if I move or step away for even a week or two weeks, all of a sudden my sales and my revenue is going to go down. And that's the point where they really got to think, well, what have I got to let go? How, how can, yes, I'm the most important person in the business to close. And I think it was, um, I always get it wrong, but I think it's fire, ready, aim, 
<laughs> is, a, is the book. And, you know, they say that up until a million dollars, uh, Michael says up until a million dollars, you've got to be the person that closed. And I completely get that, right? Yeah. But but I do think, you know, letting go is the, the hardest thing that most founders uh, have from my experience, including myself when uh, originally, you know, we, we went through that first million dollars. Yeah, that's it's the letting go. And so what do you let go of first? Like this, you know, I've been in that exact same place. I've watched other business owners as, you know, even as they scale, I mean, there's always something to let go of as you grow. What, you know, for the the smaller companies, and we got some folks listening in that are, are founders that are carrying the bag, right? And they're carrying the quota. Um, you know, how, how do you let go? Like, what do you let go of first? How would coach us on, on what you've seen work and, and what you've seen not work? Cause I've seen people let go of sales and it's been a train wreck and then they have to take it back. So how do you avoid that? Yeah, look, it's a really good point. And I think asking you know, for a friend, a, the old, the old <laughs> classic abdicate versus delegate, right? And I think sometimes mm -hmm. business owners just abdicate scar sales and they bring mm -hmm. either someone else in or they bring an agency in or something to do it on their behalf. And uh, personally, I, I haven't seen that work well. You know, I mm -hmm. think you've got to delegate it. And I had uh, Tiffany Bova on my podcast from Salesforce and she said 66% of sales is admin. Right. So just take a think of, about that for a moment. 66%. So there's a lot you can let go before you even get to the stuff that is more strategic and involves you. So that's where we love to work um, or start on is how do we get rid of that 66%? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to look at the stuff that just is just dead weight on your time, your energy um, that could be uh, outsourced. I will say just from personal experience uh, for me, and and this is thinking as a, a business owner, entrepreneur, the, the bringing on an assistant uh, and learning to delegate and elevate as, as friends over at EOS and Traction talk about has been revolutionary to me. And I think from a from a standpoint of of whether you're a you're that business owner that founder that is you know carrying the whole quota or wherever you are in your journey i think it's a really good question along the way to go what can as you're saying what can i let go of yeah and and look you know i, I worked for coca-cola for 18 years as you mentioned in the intro and you know we always tried to split the two now we always used to say coca-cola is about 50 percent, so we're you know potentially it's gone up further but mm -hmm. you know like uh entering a lot of data etc changing a lot of information we used to have sales you know uh, sales process people that did all of that for us so as a rep you know you were out there doing all the stuff that only you could do and then behind mm -hmm. the scenes you know you'd in the old days you'd make a phone call on someone to do it now a lot of it was you know done through uh, messenger and chat etc to, to get it done well it should mm -hmm. be no different here so i've got as an example i've got um, a team in australia in the philippines and in uh, colombia so we're working 24 7 and you know there's ways that well we we basically got uh scripts now i think we're up to about 500 messages or scripts that are in uh, Airtable, and it's mm -hmm. for sort of every situation so any one of my team can behave as exactly what i would say because mm -hmm. i've written the messages but they can reply as me so i can be sound asleep and you know the wheels of sales are still rolling because of the way that we've um, structured those messages. And a lot of people, you know, it's completely ad hoc all the time. And it is a bit of a pain to make that transition. But if you make the transition to say, okay, this is exactly what I'd say in this scenario and build that up, that it's a magnificent library that people can behave as you, right? Exactly the words that you would say when you're not around. Oh, that's beautiful. And um, all of that is is so core. I think um, thinking through the, you know, it's it's so interesting because in reality, in sales, we get asked the same questions over and over and over again, right? And, um, you know, and the answers are going to be very, very similar. And I think of, you know, Marcus Sheridan's work and they ask you answers phenomenal along that line of just thinking about what are the questions I get? And, and of course, 
he's advocating for writing blog articles and videos and, and all of that, which is fantastic. I love the idea though, of, of doing what you're saying here is let's just, let's, can I clone myself? Well, not exactly, but kind of, right. Let's think of how I would respond to all of these things. And now I can, can outsource that for, oh, that's beautiful. I love it. What are some other ways you're helping, uh, you help that, uh, you know, I just think of, and I got my granddaughters, you know, I think of let it go, let it go. I think it's a Disney song somewhere in there. I'm not going to sing it for anyone, but what else do we need to let <laughs> go, go of? Right. No, no, not, not on this. It, there would be some type of YouTube uh, copyright violation because I would imitate the song so well when I sang it. So what else, Paul, do we need to let go of in order to, uh, to scale? Yeah, and this one might seem a, a, a little bit obscure, but you, you need to let go of clients that aren't in your ideal client profile, right? Uh, so, this one's hard. This one is really, really hard. So tell me more. I, I agree with you, by the way. Yeah, So, and I know that you had another guest recently on talk about the ideal client profile, and mm -hmm. I think it was, was it Max or... I think Mark Hunter came on. We talked oh, about Mark, ITP for yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah it's right. one of his our favorite a, topics to talk about. Yeah, and and he did a fantastic job. So I won't go into the detail of mm -hmm. an ideal client profile, but I, I do think you know your LinkedIn profile in particular needs to really be that billboard on the road where someone goes past and they know exactly what you do in two seconds or however long it takes mm -hmm. them to pass it. And I think so many people get mixed up with who they're marketing to versus who they serve, right? And it can be very different. At Coca-Cola, we had a very, very tight, you know, perfect client that we did all our marketing towards, but it was very different to who drank the product, mm -hmm. right? And yes, you'll still get your referrals, et cetera, that come from all different sources and you'll do a bit of work that's not in your ideal client. But I think the further you niche your niche down, then that also makes it a lot easier to let go of the people that just aren't right for you, particularly the fact that you're not going to get consistent results because you're not repeating success. And the other thing is that, you know, when people come to you, they want a, a, a point of um, truth, right? They want mm -hmm. to know, well, who have you worked with? If you work with someone like me, everyone gets asked it. So, you know, then you can be consistent in the way that you answer that question, which just makes it so much easier to convert. But, uh, you know, for me, for example, you know, I, I was focusing pretty general on coaches and consultants. And I don't know how many there are in the world, but there's a hell of a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. And then I look back at when I sold my, my cloud partner business that you mentioned, I thought, well, that's, you know, I loved being that, that person. You know, I, I loved running that company. Why don't I actually niche down or niche down to that specifically? So now when you come to my profile, you'll see that I actually support cloud partners to scale to live the life with no limits. So it's very specific. And I th so I think that's a big one. Um, people have got to get um, let go of. And they always talk about the riches and the niches or niches. Mm -hmm. And yep. you know, to me, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's so good. You know, I, it, there's uh, there's a lot of wisdom to taking a real honest look at your client base, and this goes for businesses of all sizes. And um, you know, there is, I mean, we all know the eighty twenty rules in full effect on the top end, right? Twenty percent of your clients are driving eighty percent of your revenue. But I've also found there's the twenty percent on the bottom that are sucking eighty percent of the life out of you and your company, right? Because they're just not a good fit. They're never happy. They're never going to be happy. Uh, helping uh, find places for them to get services other other places uh, really is, you know, it seems like something something for a scaling business. It seems scary to let go of revenue, but. Um, I would concur. I've seen people do this. I've done it myself, swallowed hard and um, said goodbye to clients that weren't a good fit. And it feels so good. And the team yeah. uh, respects you for it and they're thankful. And it really does allow you to focus your your resource. So, wow. So let go of clients that are not ideal clients. What else you got to let go yeah. of? And, this is and, good. And just quickly on that. So you're letting go mm -hmm. before you even get them. If, you, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. The last, Don't the, take the them. One is, and that one, that one right there, though, I, I think that's something you should like 
write on a piece of paper and tape to your com computer monitor, right? Because in, you know, it is, it's tempting. It's so tempting to take revenue sometimes that looks like it's going to be, well, it's revenue. I should get it. But at the end of the day, it's not your core focus and you get distracted from, uh, yeah, the, the business that you're actually trying to build. And you can't build a scalable business if you got all different types of things you're you're running. Yeah. So yeah, good stuff, Paul. What else do we got to let go of? Yeah, the other one is selling one to one. Okay, right. selling so one to one, one to one. So you know, there's so many people out there, particularly on LinkedIn. I know that we all get them right. We're all getting mm -hmm. messages hitting us up saying, you know. Hi, you know, your profile looks great, blah, blah, blah. Next minute, bang, sales pitch, right? And they're selling one-to-one -one and, and it's a numbers game. And I, and I get it. For some industries, that's perfect, right? But if you're in the knowledge game, you don't want to play that game. So for me, you want to sell one-to-many, which is working with strategic partners that have already got your clients, ideal clients. And then for it's a lot smoother process. So I'll give you a quick example. A client of mine was selling a finance uh, SaaS product mm -hmm. and you know they were getting good leads from the vendors but they weren't always their niche they you know they knew the customers that really loved so I said well you know what uh, let's find out who's got them and you know private equity firms uh, had those as clients like one private equity firm had 40 50 clients right and there was a three-way win so the private equity firm got better data so they could make more informed decisions to make more money the owners of the business had the facts to keep the private equity guys breathing down from breathing right. down their neck and get better results and then obviously the um my client actually got the sale by implementing it and you know what we did was a webinar to to 50 companies at once because we said to the private equity firm, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to make it win for you. They said, that's great. So all of a sudden, instead of going to 50 companies individually, we got them all on a call and closed, you know, a massive deal. So that to me is one of the key things. And I think often people talk about referral partners and it's a, you know, it, it's a sort of a, a, a nice thing, you know, I'll refer you people, you refer me, but I think, no, if, who goes before you, who goes after you, where they really need you to add additional revenue for them and it mm -hmm. obviously works for you. I think that's a key one where you can really scale your growth through getting that right. And another thing that I think is so powerful about that strategy is the level of trust that you walk into the room with when you walk in with a partner they already know, like, and trust as opposed to just you know, hey, nice to meet you, you know, whether that whatever, whatever cold outreach that is, the level of trust you get when you go to market in partnership and in like that is so, so powerful. And I think there is a great, um, great question for everyone to listening in to ask is who are the partners? Where are the networks of people, um, you know, where we could add value? And I love the way that you in that scenario, describe what you need in that situation, which is what is the value that everybody is getting? Not just the end user customer, but what value is the partner getting? And when you can set up a value triangle like that, I think you've got a tremendous win. And the bonus is you walk in with trust and credibility. Yeah. And we, so, we've yeah. had some ex examples where you know, we, we'll get a strategic uh, partner and they might have a, let's say they've got a, you know, a, uh, I don't know, 500 million, well, sorry, a, a 5 million revenue growth target. And we can walk in and say, well, you know what? We can give you one of the five by just doing this strategy, right? So all, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're taking 20% that you've helped them solve. You know, it, then it really starts to, to make a great difference. And if you have five or six of these partners, the amount of marketing spend and the amount of effort you've got to put in significantly lowers. So you know it works for referrals because when was the last time, Daryl, that someone said, hey, I'd like you to talk to so-and-so and you said, no, sorry, I'm not going to do it, right? If mm -hmm. you get a warm intro, it always works. We're just doing that on scale. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely, absolutely. This is such a great conversation. Paul, is there anything else we need to let go of we're letting go of a lot of things here this is uh this is like uh it's like uh spring cleaning here right just get rid of it get it out of here what what else do we need to let go of 
Yeah, look, I think the the other thing, which is not sales related, but you obviously got to let go of the delivery of the the businesses as well. And I, I think that's where you got to develop a great team to take that from you. So, you know, everyone knows and talks about A players. I think that's really important. But but I do think that, you know, the development of your team and, you know, you know, as I said, don't abdicate. Uh, delegate is really important and some of that is through training so we we love the process of I we you so in, mm -hmm. in a regards it might be a topic where you know I'll do the I'll do the task then we'll do it together and then you teach me the task and I think that's a really important thing because you know I was very fortunate coca-cola had brilliant training and I've been through so many courses and and development and that, and that's why they've been so successful over 150 years you know how do you bring that into to your company and um, you know it's part of the growing pains where you know it's going to be a bit of front loading from that perspective but I think if you develop your current people better it reduces the risk of bringing on new people in case they don't work. So I think that's the other thing that you've got to let go of the view that I can just, you know, dump and run and mm -hmm. just go straight on to, to strategy and other things. You, you know, really got to help that uh, develop that team. That's, that's fantastic. And I think that goes back to what we were talking about before the show, which is, you know, to take your business and put it in a place to scale, to sell, or to just absolutely love. Uh, and have other people run, it really requires a process mindset, right? The mindset of saying, and for my Canadian or Australian friends, a process mindset of saying that, you know, hey, what are what are the what are the core things that need to be documented, trained, become, you know, something so now we can now we can scale and now when it's time um, to either hand off the business or step away, one of my one of my mentors along the way said, Daryl, you need to take a two month vacation from your business. Um, and if you'll do that, when you come back, you'll uh, realize what needs to be fixed, <laughs> right? And what needs to be, what you yeah. didn't document and and all of that. Um, yeah, so good. What else would you say as, as we're wrapping up here today to business owners that that really do want to scale and and grow? Where are the, where, what are, what are some other just blind spots that, that people miss? Yeah, well, look, I, I do think there's a wonderful opportunity B two B for for doing the right things on LinkedIn, and mm -hmm. I know you know on your other podcast you talk a lot about authentic relationships, etc. Mm -hmm. Right, selling from the heart. So, yep. so I do think there's a, a a really great opportunity to do that in the right way, and uh, some of the things we've been doing tactically at the moment is using video, uh, and there's a, a product called Video Ask. It's not an affiliate of mine it's just mm -hmm. a product that i love at the moment but it does let you have decision trees on videos so you can do you know mm -hmm. like often your story right is so powerful so how do you get that story in front of someone uh, a potential client so they really know whether they want you know how do you know that or sorry how do they know that you're going to add value how do they know that you're any different how do they know that there's someone you can trust and using video i think is super powerful in a way mm -hmm. to do that and you can ask them the question if they say yes then they go straight to the video if they say no then you say yeah. thank you but there's ways to do that once again that's scalable so it's you being authentic but your team is doing it through a platform like video R. so that's a you know, a really powerful way to build those connections on LinkedIn rather than just being, unfortunately, like many people where they um, get a bit carried away with the end outcome and forget that there is a, a human right. on the other side. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Hey, I'm curious as, as you're looking forward into 2022 and here we are, we're recording this in Q4 of 21, new year is upon us. Um, what do you see as some of the bigger opportunities as we're moving into the new year, just in general in, in the business climate and related to growth? Yeah, well, I think a lot of companies were you know, nervous to invest in 2021, right? And we all know mm -hmm. the reason for that. But I think 2022 is going to be a time where they do uh, start to open up the purses and, and really spend. And, and I think it's, it's a brilliant time for you, as we've been talking about, is the to bring that team in under for sales, 
you know, get rid of all that admin and get ready to scale because I think it's going to be an absolutely booming year next year. And uh, you just want to make sure now you're on the front foot to grab some of that success. I love it. I love it. Paul, thank you so much for sharing time with us today. And uh, we'll put your contact link so you can get to know some of our audience here on LinkedIn. Um, I just really, really want to say thank you for the way you've invested in us today. This has really been a great, great conversation. Yeah, no, thanks for the opportunity, Daryl. Awesome. Awesome. And thank you to everybody else in the Revenue Growth Podcast audience, the community of passionate people who are dedicated to driving growth in their organizations is inspiring. And it's so fun getting to connect with you. Uh, I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn. And also, if you would be so kind to leave a review on this podcast, it also helps all of us connect with more like-minded professionals who are dedicated to growing. Thank you again to our sponsor for this episode, Selling from the Heart. You can learn more at sellingfromtheheart.net. And I want to challenge every one of you to take what we learned from Paul today and set your organization up to scale. Wherever you are, whatever type of business you're in, whatever role you play, there were ideas here today that we can all put to work. And I want to see all of us hit 2022 and take full advantage of the opportunities Paul was talking about. So let's take action. And until next time, let's get going and let's get growing.